to everyone that tells us that if the state were to dissolve today, we would be plunged into chaos. All the structural, artistic, and technological achievements we've made will crumble, and we shall be cast into the wilderness. When the revolutionaries threw off the yoke of the state, rioted in the streets, and imprisoned their king, they expressed a desire to create a society free from hierarchical domination. They lived without a state. Some would say a state of anarchy. Each person had an equal say for the first time. Before then, France was divided into three states, the aristocracy, the clergy, and the third estate, which represented about 96% of the total population. Now, that third estate became the National Assembly, and they used their newfound power to murder tens of thousands of entrenched members of the old regime. As well, of course, as each other, once they began to suspect one another of plotting to overthrow the revolution and restore the old regime which they had finally conquered after centuries of subjugation. It was the anarchy in the streets that forced the noble revolutionaries to use authoritarian force. The passions of the people overcame the power of this legislative body that was attempting to act in the best interest of the people. The enlightened few that felt compelled to take on the burden of administration were forced to treat those that valued freedom of expression and liberty as enemy combatants of the new egalitarian state. In the minds of the revolutionary elite, those who had broken the newly founded social contract deserved none of the protections it provided. And they enforced the right of war to slay the vanquished. So anarchy clearly breeds despotism, I submit that the revolution was never truly a mandate from the people to abolish hierarchy and violent coercion. The people were merely mad at the king and the aristocracy that dominated over 90% of the population. But riots are not revolution, and the individual revolts may have been spontaneous, but the political course of the revolution was captained by a small group of individuals individuals that had the most to gain by setting up this society to benefit them. And if they had paid closer attention to Rousseau, the same one that said that society is obligated to kill its enemies, but he also said that the minute cabals and factions are formed in a free society, it no longer becomes about how many individuals vote on something, but how many associations vote. And this also stunts the free market of ideas, because rather than trying to find a common ground amongst all our differences as individuals, we focus on a few differences we have as groups. And personally for me, I feel like focusing on something positive, even if we can find one positive thing, is better than dwelling and hating each other over a couple differences. There still may have been riots in 1789, but a revolt is not a revolution. Some claim that chopping the head off of the state <laughs> creates anarchy. But whatever dictator you're talking about, no matter how powerfully this individual or group dominates over the society that they're governing, there is an entrenched hierarchical structure supporting this person or group of people. And whenever a vacancy appears in this power structure, yes, someone will just step in and take over the powers and privileges of that office. Now, they may change the name around or change the scope of their duties slightly, uh, but it's all the same. To truly move to anarchy is not to assassinate a single leader or even purge a class of people, but to create a revolution in people's minds and attitudes. Anarchy is not simply about dissolving the state, but also dissolving the conditions that create the perceived need for a state and the tools that the state uses to keep us blind with the illusion of liberty equality and fraternity.